When it comes to films, 2017 was... Yeah, it was pretty good, wasn't it? You might think it's weird that I'm talking about it this far into 2018, but I've been busy, all right? Get off my dick. It's a year that's definitely worth a revisit, though, because in between all the Last Jedis and the Spider-Mans and the Fasts and Furiouses, there were a raft of critically acclaimed films that nobody bothered to see. With that in mind, my name is Adam Cleary, and these are the eight most underrated movies of 2017. But before we begin, why not subscribe to stay notified? Ding, ding, done. Number eight, Logan Lucky. You'd think a film that managed to bring Steven Soderbergh out of his retirement might have gotten a little more attention, but the critic-beloved, audience-neglected Logan Lucky somehow managed to become one of 2017's best-reviewed box office flops. In the spirit of Soderbergh's Oceans movies, it's a high-octane comedy heist with a great cast. You've got Channing Tatum as the leader of a motley crew of petty criminals, his one-armed Iraq War veteran brother Clyde, played by Adam Driver, and Daniel Craig's bleach-blonde safecracker explosive expert Joe Bang. Somehow, a heist movie starring Magic Mike, Ben Solo, and James Bond only made the studio about $20 million. Yes, that is apparently classed as a flop. Do not get me started. Number seven, The Killing of a Sacred Deer. If 20 million is considered a flop these days, then The Killing of a Sacred Deer making just 4 million is an outright fucking disaster. These poor studios, however will they afford to eat? With comparisons to Kubrick and a nod from Cannes in the form of best screenplay, this psychological horror was, obviously, like, good, but it flatly failed to put a single arse in a cinema seat. I mean, sure, Yorgos Lanthimos make pretty weird films, The Lobster's his most accessible, and, you know, that includes toaster-based torture and dog murder, but if distributors had bothered to push this as hard as they did Lady Bird or The Florida Project, it might have done alright. Number six, the girl with all the gifts. No doubt horror fans collectively groaned at the thought of yet another zombie apocalypse movie. Well, we know we did because no bugger saw it, but the girl with all the gifts actually manages to breathe a much needed bit of fresh air into the genre. Adapted from Marvel Comics writer Mike Carey's novel of the same name, it's set in a near future Britain in which most of the population has been wiped out by a fungal virus that turns them into mindless, flesh-hungry shells of their former selves. Yes, just like The Last of Us. The twist, though, is that a cure is believed to reside inside the bodies of these semi-sentient zombies who, yes, do admittedly want to eat your brains, but also think and feel just like you and me. Well, just like you. It's thought-provoking, it's beautifully shot, it has Gemma Arterton. What more could you ever possibly want? Number five, Brigsby Bear. All right, we've had $20 million flops, $4 million flops, and $2 million flops. But sit yourself down for this one. The brilliant Brigsby Bear made a pitiful $500,000. Now, okay, yes, the premise is slightly odd. Child is kidnapped and forced to live in an underground bunker with his weirdo captors. They pose as his parents, self-produce a stack of VHS tapes about a sci-fi bear to occupy him, and when he finally gets out as an adult, he resolves to make his own film to conclude the bear's adventures. A tale as old as time. It is strange, it is sad, it is really, really good. And you, sitting right there, should watch it. Number four, I don't feel at home in this world anymore. Multi-talented actor, screenwriter, and now director Mac and Blair made his directorial debut with I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore and got 88% on Rotten Tomatoes. That is no mean feat. However, despite being subversive, smart, fun, and really really, really violent, the movie flew under most people's radars thanks to a Netflix release. Which, as we now all know, only gets you any traction if your film is absolute wasp shit. Still though, it's without a doubt one of the year's best indies, puts its director firmly on the map as one to watch, and has a scene where Elijah Wood hits someone in the face with a mace. So yeah, spoil yourself. Number three, It Comes at Night. Maybe it was the misleading marketing that touted this as a straight-up jump-scare-heavy horror movie, or perhaps in a year that gave us such critically acclaimed horrors as Get Out, It and Mother, it was somewhat eclipsed by more visible genre movies. But either way, the lack of love last year for Trey Edward Schultz's post-apocalyptic horror, It Comes at Night, was, in the opinion of the person who wrote my script, absolutely baffling. While critics were quick to praise the movie, it was last year's cinematic equivalent of Adam Wilborn's mother, as thousands of visitors to CinemaScore just gave it a massive D. 
Fair enough being miffed while you're expecting a spooky, straightforward horror, but it's not the end of the world if instead you get a slow burner whose scares are more psychological. Deal with it. Number two, Brawl in Cell Block 99. Look, right, I'm not gonna go into this too much as Brawl in Cell Block 99 is a wonderful piece of grindhouse fare and does not need some dope like me pulling it apart to make it worth watching. All I will say is that it is incredibly, incredibly violent, has some eye-watering black humor, and might just have saved Vince Vaughn's career ahead of his role as Jake the Snake in the upcoming Page biopic. Hey, did I mention we have a wrestling channel? Number one, Professor Marston and the Wonder Woman. Patty Jenkins' Wonder Woman may have been one of 2017's biggest movies, but another film about the man who created the iconic superheroine and the woman who shaped her didn't quite get the attention it deserved. Directed by Angela Robinson, the movie chronicles the polyanimous, bondage-filled relationship between the trailblazing trio of American psychologist William Marston, his wife Elizabeth, and their partner Olive Byrne that led to the creation of the female superhero in the 1940s. A smart and funny biopic that's sexy without being exploitative and boasts an Oscar-worthy performance from Hall as the ferociously intelligent yet vulnerable Elizabeth is a must-see movie for any self-proclaimed Wonder Woman fan. And even if you're not, it's still fascinating to delve into a real-life, again, bondage-influenced origin story. Let's just say that Wonder Woman's lasso of truth makes a lot more sense after seeing this film. Hello, you made it all the way to the end of the video. Aren't you good? While you're here, we have other channels that are probably also quite nice, so why not give one of those a little watch? You never know, you might find something you like. Or, who knows, I might be there as well. Ooh, spooky. Bye.